We are going to revisit the 2004-2005 NHL lockout. I'm going to do it in five minutes. Firstly, in the years leading up, there were nine new teams from 92 up to 2000 that joined. There was a player strike in 93 and Gary Betchman became commissioner. At the same time, within his first year of being in charge, there was another lockout in 94. There was no salary cap either. Now, all this led into 2004. There was issues between sharing revenues and salaries. The league were in a very strong position. They made a lot of money out of expansion. But they had actually sort of been not totally truthful about how much money the league was making or losing, hence the Levitt report, which most people roundly believe was some creative accounting in there. They claim they lost 270-odd million. The NHLPA was a divided house, hence why the league was in a strong position to go, right, you've agreed to a salary cap, and that's when the talks broke down. The talks broke down after a salary cap was agreed between the NHLPA and the NHL. That's where it went a bit wrong for the NHLPA. They'd lost their bargaining chip going, well, we could have actually got a higher salary cap had we agreed to the salary cap at the end of the talks. The guy in charge of the NHLPA uh, was thrown, good enough, was thrown under the bus. He was run over by a bus, literally. They, the players loved, they, they, they used him as a scapegoat for all their failings. The NHL eventually and the NHLPA, at the end of the lockout, a whole season was lost and Gary Betchman became very, very popular when he announced that on live TV going, we're not playing this year. Smooth, Gary. Smooth. Well handled. Great public relations. Brilliant. Um, the salary cap was set at £39 million. It was linked to revenues. Because the league had claimed it had been losing money, it was, it, that's how they managed to keep the salary cap so low. Oh yeah, the, the, the player association was £49 million. Um, Anywho, there were other effects. Over here in the UK, a lot of NHL players, before and after and during the lockout, came over to play at uh, roughly this time. So in the run-up to the lockout, I've done a video on the history of British ice hockey, the Super League went out of business. At the end of this lockout period, when all the American and Canadian players went back to the NHL, the British National League went out of business. Knock-on effects were felt because British ice hockey running costs went through the roof as well, because the, the free agents who came over to play, or those who couldn't play because of a lockout, needed either to get paid if they weren't on centralised contracts with their teams, or to have their their costs looked after, like expenses, housing and equipment. And that added pressure on already strained team budgets because British ice hockey was running out of money at this point and it's taken 13 years to recover. Done that in another video. That was our side effect. The positive side is some rule changes in British ice hockey have taken place where more young talent is being developed. There's now a limit on how many overseas players you can have in a squad and um, the level of hockey has improved no end. It has. In the long run, it has. More young British players are playing and keeping in the game longer. Um, the Elite League has grown and the success of the Elite League teams has been shown in, on, in the European level. So there has been some positive, but there was a lot of negatives. Another one of the negatives was Atlanta had to move up in between the 2005 and 2013 lockouts. They had to move. It, it made the league very cautious with expansion because it didn't want to do revenue sharing with, with the players, did it? Because that means the salary cap has to go up. And it's only now that the league is expanding again. But, unlike 2005, both sides are now in strong positions, which means they're probably more likely to negotiate and more likely to avoid a future lockout. I hope the league has learned. Because at the time, it made the league look very amateur, and a lot of fans that had recently been attracted to the league with expansion turned their backs on the league when they went, this is crap. The issue was greed. Pure and simple. The billionaires would still be billionaires and the millionaires would still be millionaires, but they all were getting greedy. Um, Gary Betchman, he's a love-hate figure, and hopefully, I think he goes as commissioner in 2020, I think. That'll be part of any agreement that is agreed, as he has to step down as commissioner on someone else. A fresh face, a fresh voice has to come in. Um... But yeah, we lost a whole season. It was mostly to do with money. Um, hence why you now have a salary cap. Before then, no salary cap. Um, but it did make the league look very amateur. And some teams still, even now, struggle to draw fans. Not because they haven't been successful or they're not good, good product. It's because of having three lockouts and a player strike in 25 years will leave that imprint on the casual observer the guy who wants to invest and those who want to play the actual people who play the game 
they want most players want to play. Um, but it had knock-on effects that are still being felt now in some quarters. Some of them have been positive, some have been negative. But with Seattle going to be joining next year, the season after next, and Vegas having been a success story, I think the league wants to avoid a lockout because it wants to keep the new fans they've just attracted. And they would have had a lot of money come in, so they can't use the excuse, we're losing money, because that won't wash with, with the NHLPA or the public. The players have to realise they've never been paid so much in all their lives. Players like Jack Eye, Conor McDavid and Carey Price earning so much. Yeah, that damages the argument saying we're not paid enough. So, but the positions they come in at, I believe uh, the lockout won't happen in 2020. I've already done that. Um, but it is worrying that once a decade we seem to have a lockout. But no, I'm going to leave that there. That's my little take on the 2004-2005 lockout. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, place them in the comments below. And um, I'll have some more videos for you soon.